Brandon, what's going on? Dark Knight, Dark Knight Radio. I want to start off by saying, man, I really appreciate you guys who listen, comment, and who remain active on these videos, man. Y'all give me the motivation, really, to come in here and talk about topics, my experiences. I mean, these are true stories. And to to even give me the confidence to tell these. I mean, these are stories that, that didn't go past phone conversations with certain people. And I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the support from you guys, man. Honestly, thank you. Um, this video, this is Fight Over the Bathroom. True story, 100% organic, GMO free, cap free. Uh, this is a story time when I worked at Walgreens. Spoiler, shocker, surprise, right? It was crazy. Um, let's dive in it. So um, this this particular story is about, okay, so when I was the overnight manager, as soon as I came in on my shift, I used to lock everything down. The second front door got locked. The bathroom got locked overnight. That, that, that was nothing, as far as the building wise, the only thing you can do is come in our shop, buy, leave. And uh, I was the first manager to implement a lot of the security measures we had inside the store i wasn't gonna let two or two of the front doors be open overnight because anyone want to steal that'll give them that'll, that'll give them free reigns to steal in the first three four aisles and just run out the store in the second window um, the second door through the makeup aisle and i wasn't gonna let it happen i ain't had time for that so people who pretty much knew me who came regularly at the store knew I was kind of serious about that so a lot of people wouldn't even ask me now you have some new people some bold people who used to try used to come and ask now this particular night I'm doing some training so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm over at the counter behind the uh, it right by a register I'm doing some training uh, before my shift starts right and I never wore Matter, matter of fact, it didn't fit me, the Walgreens vest, but I never wore it. First of all, it didn't fit. It won my drip. It, 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 it wasn't cool looking. And overnight, I didn't want people to know that I was the manager. I wanted to catch people stealing. So I purposely disguised myself in the back aisles so I can catch somebody red handed, right? So that's how serious I took my job. I mean, if I'm gonna do something, I'm the type of person I'm gonna do it. And looking back on it, why? But I digress. So one day I'm sitting down doing my training. So these two skinny leg fellows, skinny skinny jean wearing fellows, come in the back, and he saying, "Hey man, can you use the restroom?" And they talking to a cashier, I think. I forgot who they were talking to. And my sister, my big sister Ashley, the security guard. Shout out to you, Ashley. Shout out to you. She was the um, the security on deck that night, right? So I forgot who they asked to use the restroom, but they was like, they were like, it's closed, and they were like, who said it? And as soon as as soon as they asked who said the bathroom was closed, the person they asked looked at me, and they looked at me. Well, he demands he says closed, so they asked me. I said, yeah, my bad, man. Uh, I know I know it's inconvenient, but we do lock the bathrooms overnight because security reasons and other reasons about stuff you've seen inside the store. Now, I'm going to make a separate video of just the stories about this bathroom, okay, at walk. Because it, it was terrible. It was deplorable. Disgusting. Feel disgusting, right? So, um, he asked me, and you see how cool and how I responded with much courtesy. It wasn't, nah, nigga, the bathroom closed for nigga. It wasn't, it wasn't that. So he goes and say, man, I, man, come on, man, I got to use it. I said, I know, man, everybody have to use it, but we do close them. If I open them for you, I got to open them from everybody, and I got to be fair, so we just shut them down. Come on, man, let me get, let me get in the bathroom. Damn, man, you tripping. I said, I already told you, brother, I'm not going to go back and forth. The bathrooms are closed. Hey, look, man, I, I'll give you $10. I said, I'm cool. He said, you don't make number 10 anyway, fuck. Nigga, you don't make that much money anyway every night, do you? You don't make number $10 an hour up in this month. And I'm thinking, 
I said, all right, look, look, man, I, I see where you're trying to go, man. I said, look, I said, be a bigger man than that, dude. Because you ain't, you ain't finna get no rise out of me. Now, you, 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 you can hold all that. So I know I, I get paid way more than 10 or much more. But I knew for a fact hey, like I got paid more. So that one, that one going to get me out of my chair. That one going to get me excited. You know what I mean? So I said, nah, keep your money, bro. You might need it more than I do. Keep your money. The pants a little bit too tight anyway. Nigga, what? What, nigga? Start putting his hands up, making all, you know, start making signs or whatever, whatever. And so, so I get back on the computer and I have my baton because he's he's pulling up those tight pants he's wearing. You know what I mean? And we're at a far enough space from each other where I can be kind of lax because I know at the at the distance he's at, he can't really do nothing. So I have my baton getting ready to whip it out. And he's he's there, he's still saying, and one thing he said that got me up out of my chair, he warned. I he got me up out of my chair. He was like, Whoever was your parents, I feel sorry for this street nigga, what he said. Whoever's your parents, I feel sorry for them. And I'm like, that's the best you got for me. Your mama, your daddy, you, you might not even know your daddy. Your mama probably didn't. I, I said, what you say, man? Before he can finish what he was saying. Remember, I'm trying to do my job. I'm trying to do my training. I don't want to. I, I don't want to bust nobody in the face with a baton. I just want to do my job on my shift and go home in the morning if I can make it about that, man. All right. So. He goes on and say, yeah, your parents, they should be ashamed of you. They raised a fuck nigga as a son. That's what he said. i like, my guy. So I get up and I mosey my way on by the little Dorito aisle, by the little chip aisle, little chip stand we had up. I say, now, 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 when he, when he saw me, when I got up, I guess he didn't know I was, I was as big as I was, right? Cause he, he looked to the right and looked to the left. He was still looking at my shoulders, and he was like, uh, "Maybe I maybe I was talking to the wrong." Yeah. Cause I was sitting down after I was doing my training, right? So I said, "What you said?" I said, "I'm gonna get a little close so you can see and see what you said." Now uh, he, uh, you, you heard me stutter. He said, you, "You heard me." I said, "Nah, say it again. So I can hear you. I couldn't hear you back there. You know, I got bad hearing back there. Say it, say it right here. So I can, so I can hear you again." I said, you big man, you big, you big boy, you the bullet, right? So say it again. So he goes to pull his pants up. Now, everybody know that's the universal language of I'm about to swing, or I want to give the appearance I'm about to swing. Right? So when he pulls his pants up, I like I said, this is this is more of a younger, you know, less cultivated person. You know, I was young. I'm always blaming stuff on my youth. I'm not gonna bring it on. I'm not gonna blame it on me as a more seasoned version of myself. I'm blaming it on you and being full of red bills and coke, red bulls and coke, not the drug, but the drink, which is also a drug. Think about it. But I digress. So I go to mush the guy, right? I go to mush him. He's still trying to pull his pants up. You you in it now. You already pulled them tight ass pants up. You in the thick of it now. So the homeboy come over and you know when I'm mad, when I'm about to when I'm about to fight or anything, I don't like nobody touching and grabbing on me. I didn't know his I I, I recognize his partner who's coming out a few times, but I don't know you. Don't come and try to break me up. Don't come and try to touch me and put your hands on me. Get your fingers rubbing all against my chest and nipples. Nigga, go move. I said, bro, move your hand. Don't tell me no more, bro. Don't tell me. Don't say nothing to me. Don't tell me. Right? So, now nah, he cool, bit man. He cool. You know what I'm saying? He just tripping. He tripping. He off He off a, a molly. Man. I said, he off a molly. I said, he going to be going on more than that, man. Because I ain't trying to hear it. So, he still, the little, the little nigga with the dread, with the tight pants, he still popping, popping a lot of cash money. Right? You're not going to do nothing. That's been established because you've been mushed. Your partner had to come over here and save you. You know what I'm saying? He almost got it for touching me, your partner. Now, you you don't walk a sleeping bear. You don't got me up out my chair. I mean, some hot Cheetos, which I love to eat. I, I'm not eating my hot Cheetos, so I'm really mad. I don't want to be doing the training I'm doing. They made me do. I don't want to be in at this job tonight. 
So you got me at a state in which you're going to have to deal with what, how, what you brought me to. I can't talk to I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm, like I, I'm, I'm going to reiterate. This is a, you know, a less cultivated, younger version of myself, especially in that environment, right? So he, he, he looks, he backs up, and he looks at me. He stopped what he was doing. And this kind of really got my attention what he did. This kind of... This kind of really made me aware because he stopped. He stopped with the front. He stopped with the flex. And he stopped trying to pull them tight at his pants up. He turned his hat to the side, to the to the back. He had a fitted cap on. He turned it to the back, right, so I could see his face. He looks at me, and it got real quiet inside the store when he said this. For some reason, I promise you, I can hear him clearly, right? And it was packed that night. He looks at me, and he points at my chest. He says, "You gonna get a bullet in your lung for that? I'll be back." Now, when somebody say they'll be back, that's a man whose ego and manhood has been tried and they will do in the male ego is fragile. The male ego is powerful. So when a, when, a, when a little nigga who's been, I guess, perceived as being punked and emasculated says, I'll be back. I'm going to take him for his word. A nigga do anything to protect his ego. That's one thing you don't do. That's why a nigga get mad when you say the nigga ain't working with too much, you know, in, in, in the belt, in the pants department. That's why it goes with the male ego. So when he did that, when he says that and he left, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, I'm still 38 high. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to put a punch in the, the I'm going to put a punch in the signs down and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and, and stomping on ships. And I'm 38 red. He don't got me there. Now I got I got to take it out on some somebody. So he leaves, right? He walks off. He walked out real calm. He didn't walk off yelling, which pegged me to think, okay, this nigga for real. So what I gotta do? I gotta make sure when he come back. I got some for him. I wanna make sure that mine, whatever I got, my strap is somewhere close near me. Cause when he come. He gonna get what he asking for, and somebody told me you always find what you search for. It may not be exactly what you want, but in some capacity, you will get it. It's Dark Knight Radio. I'm Dark Knight. You guys be good. Be safe.